I am a huge geek. <laughs> Whether I was obsessing over the latest blockbuster or something written centuries ago, I've always had a soft spot for stories. It's something humanity has possessed for some 17,000 years now. This is the earliest evidence you have of storytelling. It comes from the Lascaux Caves in France. In the 700 BC, the first printed story, the Epic of Gilgamesh, was created in Mesopotamia. I believe you've likely heard at least one of Aesop's fables, which include The Boy Who Cried Wolf and The Tortoise and the Hare. These were written around the 200s BC. Although Aesop himself lived much earlier, storytelling by word of mouth alone kept these tales alive for centuries. So, we've always been fascinated by stories, but it begs the question, what is a story? At its core, it's a series of connected events. One thing happens, and it leads to another. With such a loose definition, it makes sense that stories have changed so much over time, and so is the way we view them. Nowadays, mythology is huge in pop culture, all the way from Wonder Woman to Percy Jackson. But initially, it was created as what could be called science. It explains natural phenomena and occurrences. When the Vikings saw thunder and lightning, they thought that the god Thor was wielding his hammer Mjolnir. And when the sun rose, the ancient Greeks decided that it was in a chariot, which Helios or Apollo in some versions drove across the sky every day. As powerful deities were formed, so societies grew to surround them, places of worship constructed, and religions founded. Of course, myths provide more than just explanations. They also highlight the themes and values held in importance by their cultures. Great strength, for instance, both mental and physical, are abundant among mythological heroes. When I was younger, I was absolutely hooked on all these mythologies from all over the globe. Looking back, I suppose it was a way to explore various cultures and read new stories at the same time. Some may argue that these stories are outdated and therefore unnecessary, but they are woven into cultures that still exist today, and so they are preserved as a facet of our collective thought. Even if we no longer hold these stories to be absolute fact, we still try to maintain a kind of truth in them. As well as a tool for recording history, fiction is also a brilliant medium for spreading ideas. Moral stories have done this for millennia by weaving the plot and lesson together. Take Little Red Riding Hood, the classic tale of stranger danger. It's one thing to tell children not to take candy from a stranger, but to have the consequences of that involve a wolf eating a child? Now that, it, it stays in you, I should think. <laughs> Such lessons are more memorable when you're invested in them, and stories would dramatize things to engage you. Of course, moral stories, fables, and parables are far from the only narratives to direct messages to the audience. I recently became quite infatuated with superhero films, so I decided to have a look at their origins. Comic books are renowned for their influence. They rose in popularity during the 1930s, which in America was the Great Depression, the worst economic crisis in the country's history. During this bleak time, comics provided hope and entertainment, no matter how small. Superheroes like Superman were revered as protectors, even if imaginary. And they would later come to be seen as role models. During World War II, Captain America was conceived as a foil to Hitler, and so became a symbol of patriotism and righteousness. I'd like you to feast your eyes upon the following. While this image of Captain America punching the dictator would be considered fairly normal today. 
Presenting such an image back then was an extremely bold and dangerous move. At the time, America was largely isolationist, meaning that they were opposed to joining the war. However, the characters' creators, Jack Kirby and Joe Simon, saw the injustice and atrocities committed by the Nazis, and so decided that something had to be done. Fiction still contains similar themes today. Growing up, one of my favorite series was Harry Potter, the story of a young wizard and his friends fighting the forces of evil. I was enchanted by all the weird and wacky wand work and all the fantastic beasts, but amid the magic and fantasy of the wizarding world, there are many lessons that we can learn. One of the most obvious of which is about bravery. I remember it being hard not to root for the house Gryffindor, where dwell the brave at heart. And even if I really don't appreciate the intense Slytherin bashing, the actions of Harry, Ron and Hermione really showed me the importance of having the courage to do what's right. Another prominent lesson from the wizard world is one of tolerance. From the start of the series, we are presented with examples of discrimination against various groups of people, especially muggles and muggle-borns. This later develops into a full-blown genocide by the time we reach Book 7. But even before the Dark Lord Voldemort takes over in The Deathly Hallows, the series tells us that such anti-muggle sentiments had existed for a long time in this fictional world. This reflects the very real bigotry that has existed throughout history and sadly persists to this day. The author, J.K. Rowling, has said that she wanted Harry to leave our world and find exactly the same problems in the wizarding world. Through fiction, she has drawn our attention to problems that can and do exist in societies, as well as how easy it can be to, to neglect the well-being of others. These books, as well as so many others, really shaped my worldview. But just reading fiction in general helped me to empathize with others and see things from a variety of perspectives. When you witness social cues and interactions repeatedly, you'll eventually internalize it and it becomes how you act. Um, I guess I sound a bit like an alien trying to imitate human behavior in London. But in a way, behavior is largely imitation and fiction presents us with scenarios that we can recognize in real life. Therefore, you are what you read or watch, and your mindset is often informed by whatever narratives you've been exposed to. That said, if fiction can have a positive impact, it can just as easily have a more negative one. Even stories written with good intentions may inadvertently deliver harmful messages or simply be interpreted in a way that's detrimental to others. An example of this, quite old now, would be the Dirty Harry films. The character detective Dirty Harry Callahan is a cop who's unafraid to operate outside of professional boundaries in order to punish wrongdoers. This often leads to him brutally killing criminals and causing lots of property destruction, which frankly isn't great. The character arose during the 70s and 80s and provided a template for The Vigilante Cop, which would become an American film icon. Dirty Harry himself emerged during the Vietnam War, a particularly low time for the US, which would explain how he came to be seen as such a heroic figure in that time. However, although he pursues what he views to be justice, his actions appear to encourage or even glorify police brutality something which remains a large problem today. But ultimately, all fiction, whether it's Dirty Harry or Harry Potter, all these stories, they tell us something, they have an impact. In the end, fiction is us trying to make sense of ourselves and the world that we live in. And in this way, it can be said to be part of our identities, whether personal or collective. So stories are great things that we should treasure, whether they serve to deliver a positive message or simply entertain, it all helps to make the world a little better. Thank you.